I want to ask you something. Does the equation x squared minus dy squared equal to 4 admit any odd integer solutions for a positive integer d congruent to 5 modulo 8? You probably won't be able to answer immediately, right? So let's take this back a minute. How about we try for d equals to 5? After a little bit of experimenting, you might be able to see that x equals 3 and y equals 1 is such a solution as 3 squared minus 5 times 1 squared equals to 4. Okay, great. How about we try for a different value of d? Let's try d equals to 37. Have a go right now. I claim that no matter what you do, you won't be able to find such a solution. In this seminar, we're going to discuss this interesting problem and investigate the tools of algebraic number theory that help us in exploring this issue. Pell's equation is one of the oldest and most studied Diophantine equations. Finding integer solutions x and y such that x squared minus dy squared equals to plus minus 1, where d is a square-free integer. The equation was studied prominently by early Greek mathematicians, as well as Indian mathematician Brahmagupta, who found a solution for d equals to 92. With the tools of algebraic number theory, one can show that this equation always permits infinitely many solutions, all stemming from a fundamental solution. In 1844, a list of open problems of Eisenstein were published. Among these were Eisenstein's fourth problem, the focus of this seminar. Does there exist any criterion a priori to determine the existence of odd integer solutions to the Eisenstein-Pell equation, x squared minus dy squared equals to 4, for a positive integer d congruent to 5 mod 8? That is, is there any condition on the values of d which tells us if there are such solutions to the equation? We first see that the congruence condition is necessary, as if x squared minus dy squared is equal to 4, since the only squares mod 8 are 0, 4, and 1, and the only odd squares mod 8 are 1, then x, y, and odd implies that x squared must be congruent to y squared congruent to 1 mod 8. So reducing the Eisenstein's Pell equation, we see that 1 minus d is congruent to 4 mod 8, and thus d is congruent to 5 mod 8. As of yet, no such condition has been found. However, an interesting proposition has been proved about the equivalent conditions to the admission of odd integer solutions and a conjecture on how many values of d, congruent to 5 mod 8, admit odd solutions. Specifically, two-thirds of them. Computational data from Stevens and Williams from, for d in the range 10 to the 8 to 10 to the 9 indicates that approximately 67.4% of d in the interval do admit odd solutions, supporting the conjecture. Verifying this claim can be difficult, however, as it is computationally intensive to find the fundamental solution for a Pell equation. The best classical algorithm to compute the fundamental unit of k equals to q adjoined square root of d runs with time complexity uh, exponential of o square root of log n log of log of n, where n is equal to the logarithm of d. A 2002 result by Holgren discovered a way to speed this up, finding a quantum alg algorithm to determine the fundamental unit in polynomial time. To investigate into the equivalent conditions of the problem, we open up our toolbox of algebraic number theory, building up fundamental objects and results that allow us to investigate Eisenstein's fourth problem. First, let's look at the ring of integers. Over a number field k, an element alpha in K is an algebraic integer if it satisfies a monic irreducible polynomial in Z of X. It can be shown that the set of algebraic numbers over a number field K forms a ring. This is called the ring of integers, denoted OK. The ring of integers satisfies many nice properties, including that it is a Dedekind domain. The ring of integers is integrally closed. OK admits unique factorization of fractional ideals and it is a finitely generated Z module. A particular number field of interest is the quadratic number field K equals to Q adjoined square root of D. We can factorize Pell's equation in this field as X plus Y root D multiplied by X minus Y root D. We find the ring of integers in this number field by the following theorem. In a quadratic number field, K equals Q square root D for D square free, 
The ring of integers is given by ok equals to z root d if d is congruent to 2, 3, mod 4, and z adjoin 1 plus the square root of d all over 2 when d is congruent to 1, mod 4. We call uh, a z module of this form, where we're just adjoining a single, mod, uh, a single element, we call that monogenic. So in any case, the, a, any quadratic number field has a monogenic ring of integers. Now we'll begin on the proof of this theorem. Suppose alpha is an algebraic integer. Then since alpha is in q root d, alpha is of the form a plus b square root d. Um, and now we know since that, and now we know since alpha is an algebraic integer, um, its minimal polynomial must be an algebraic integer. Uh, the minimal polynomial of, of alpha we see is x minus a minus b square root d multiplied by x minus a plus b square root d, which simplifies as x squared minus 2ax plus a squared minus db squared. Okay, so now if this is alpha's minimal polynomial and alpha is an algebraic integer, each of these coefficients must be in must be integers. So we get that 2a is in z and a squared minus db squared is in z. Now we see that 2b root d can be expressed as 2 alpha minus 2a, as alpha is a plus b root d. Since alpha is an algebraic integer and 2a is in the integer, um, we have that 2a b root d is sorry, 2b root d is an algebraic integer. Now, since 2b root d is an OK, and the set of algebraic integers forms a ring, its square, that is 2b squared times d, is also an algebraic integer. Now, since d is square free, and 2b squared times d is an algebraic integer, it follows that 2b must also be an integer. Then, since 2b is in, so then we have 2b and 2a are both integers. So a is equal to r over 2 and b is equal to s over 2 for some integers r and s. Okay, now we break off into our two cases. When d is congruent to 2, 3 mod 4 and when d is congruent to 1 mod 4. Now, since 2b root d is in the algebraic integers and the set of all algebraic integers forms a ring, it follows that its square, 2b squared multiplied by d, is also an algebraic integer. Since d is square free, for 2b squared times d to be an algebraic integer, 2b must be a rational integer. So we have that 2b is in z. Now we have 2b is in z and 2a is also in z. So we can write a and b as uh, in the form a equals to r over 2 and b equals to s over 2 for some integers r and s. Now we break off into our two cases, when d is congruent to 2, 3 mod 4 and when d is congruent to 1 mod 4. Since we had that a squared minus db squared is in z and a is r over 2 and b is s over 2, we rewrite this as r squared minus ds squared over 4 is in z. It follows that the numerator must be congruent to 0, 1, 4. Now, we see that the only squares modulo 4 are 0 and 1. Hence, for r squared minus ds squared to be congruent to 0, mod 4, if d is congruent to 2 or 3 mod 4, as in the first case, we get that r squared is congruent to ds squared mod 4. And so r squared is congruent to 2s squared or to 3s squared mod 4. Since r squared can only be 0 or 1, and s squared can also only be 0 and 1, for d equals to 2, for d congruent to 2 or 3 mod 4, the only solution is s squared congruent to 0 mod 4, as 2 and 3 are not squares modulo 4. Thus, we get that r squared is congruent to s squared congruent to 0 mod 4.
Now, since r squared is congruent to s squared congruent to 0, 1, 4, both r and s must be even. Since a and b are of the form r over 2 and s over 2, where r and s are even, we get that a and b are two integers. Hence, for the conditions to be satisfied that 2a is an integer and a squared minus db squared is an integer, it is sufficient that we choose any integral combination of square root d and 1. That is, the ring of integers when d is congruent to 2, 3, mod 4 is z root d. Now, in the second case, when d is congruent to 1 mod 4, uh, we require r squared minus ds squared to be congruent to 0 mod 4, as before. Uh, and since d is congruent to 1 mod 4, this is equivalent to r squared congruent to s squared mod 4. As we've seen, the two squares modulo 4 are 0 and 1, and both are solutions to this equation. Hence, uh, r, can be, r squared can be congruent to 0 or 1 modulo 4, so r um, s congruent to 0 or 1 mod 4 both suffice. That is to say that the ring of integers admits half integers, where r and s may be either even or odd. And hence, since alpha equals to a plus b or d, alpha is of the form r over 2 plus s over 2 square root d, which can be rewritten uh, as uh, an element of z adjoined 1 plus square root d over 2 as required. This is a complete characterization of the ring of integers in a quadratic number field. When approaching problems, however, the ring of integers is not always computationally accessible. An example arises when attempting to solve Pell's equation uh, by factorizing into x minus y root d, x plus y root d for square root d. One has unique factorization into ideals in q adjoined square root d and can use this to determine solutions. However, it may not be computationally possible to decide if a large number d is square free. At present, no deterministic algorithm of polynomial time complexity exists to decide whether a number is square free or extract the square free part. In circumstances where the ring of integers is not applicable, a weaker notion of an order can be used. A lattice of a number field is a finitely generated free module over the integers. An order of a number field k is a subring of the ring of integers, which spans k over q, and is a z lattice. The ring of integers is the largest order in k. The next tool we'll look at is the discriminant. An embedding is an injective homomorphism from k to q. If alpha1 to alpha n is a basis for k, then the discriminant is the square of the determinant of the matrix with ij entry, sigma i of alpha j where the sigmas are the embeddings of k. The discriminant of k is equal to the discriminant of its ring of integers, which is calculated using a basis for the ring of integers. Let's find the discriminant in a quadratic number field. Recall that in a quadratic number field, the ring of integers is given by z root d, when d is congruent to 2, 3, mod 4, and otherwise it's given z 1 plus root d over 2. Now, when d is congruent to 2, 3, mod 4, we have that 1 square root d is a basis for OK. Thus, we have two embeddings from k to q, namely sending 1 to 1 and root d to root d, the identity, and its Galois conjugate, um, 1 to 1, and root d goes to minus root d. That is, root d is sent to its Galois conjugate. In this case, we see that the Discriminant delta k is the determinant squared of the matrix 1, 1, root d, minus root d, which is equal to 2d whole squared, which is 4d. Now, when d is congruent to 1 mod 4, we see that 1, uh, 1 plus root d over 2 is a basis for OK, and then the two, uh, the two embeddings from k to q here are the identity and the map sending 1 plus root d over 2 to its Galois conjugate.
1 minus root d over 2. Thus, we see that the discriminant is the square of the matrix 1, 1, 1 plus root d over 2, 1 minus root d over 2, which gives us d. Hence, when d is congruent to 1 mod 4, the discriminant is equal to d. And when d is congruent to 2, 3 mod 4, the discriminant is equal to 4d. In the conditions equivalent to Eisenstein's Pell equation admitting no odd solutions for d congruent to 5 mod 8, an important notion of the ideal class group of an order O arises and is denoted CL of O. The class group is the set of equivalence classes of an ideal of The class group is the set of equivalence classes of ideals of an order O under the relation an ideal I is related to an ideal J if AI is equal to BJ for some A, B, and O non-zero. It is a famous result in algebraic number theory that the class group of any order is finite and thus its size is denoted by the class number. Another formulation of the class group is with fractional ideals of an order O, that is, finitely generated O modules. A fractional ideal I of R is called invertible if there exists another ideal J such that their product is the entire domain R. The set of non-zero invertible fractional ideals of K forms a group under multiplication and is denoted I of R. The principal fractional ideals form a subgroup denoted P of R. With these, we can show that the class group is equivalent to the quotient group of I of O by P of O for any order O of K. An important result in algebraic number theory is that the ring of integers admits unique factorization of fractional ideals. This can be used to solve Pell's equation and has many nice implications. In general, for an order O, there is a subset of fractional ideals for which we have unique factorization. A unit of R is an invertible element of R. The set of units forms a group denoted R star. We define the norm of an element in K to be the product of its Galois conjugate to the power of the degree of k. It can be shown that the units in the ring of integers are exactly those elements with norm plus minus 1. In k equals to q adjoined square root of d, these are in correspondence with the solutions to Pell's equation, as the norm of an element is a squared minus db squared. If it is a unit, then it must be a solution. Clearly then, to solve Pell's equation, it suffices to find the unit group of q root d. But how do we do so? How can we find all units? Well, that's where Dirichlet's unit theorem comes in. Dirichlet's unit theorem says that there are finitely many units which generate the unit group. That is, if r1 is the number of real embeddings from k to q, and r2 is the number of pairs of complex embeddings, then s equals to r1 plus r2 minus 1, uh, units of an order O generate its unit group. For a unit in O, we have a unique representation as a product of a root of unity in O and powers of U1 through to US. In a quadratic number field, S equals to 1, and thus there is only one unit which generates the entire group. This is called the fundamental unit and denoted epsilon. As we've seen, the elements of norm plus minus 1 in k equals to q root d, that is, the units uh, are in correspondence with solutions to Pell's equation. This theorem implies that every solution to the Pell equation, x squared minus dy squared equals to plus minus b1, can be found by finding the unit group of the ring of integers. Now, we move on to some results which relate to Eisenstein's fourth question, posed at the start of the seminar. One can show that every solution of x and y to Eisenstein's Pell equation x squared minus dy squared equals to 4 is in correspondence to an element of the order z root d of the form x plus y square root d equals to plus minus 2 epsilon to some power k. That is, once we find the fundamental unit, we can find all solutions to the Pellian equation and determine the existence of odd solutions. Since each solution is of the form 2 times the power of epsilon, the only way which we can have an odd solution 
is if epsilon is half of an odd integer. We can also show that x and y must have the same parity to form a solution. These observations lead to a modern result of Stevenhagen relating to equivalent conditions of Eisenstein's fourth problem. A theorem of odd classification shows that if Eisenstein's Pell equation x squared minus dy squared equals to 4 does not admit solutions for odd integers x and y, then it is equivalent to the following conditions. The fundamental unit, epsilon, in the ring of integers reduces to the unit class of OK mod 2 OK star. The unit groups of OK and the order O4D equal to Z adjoined square root of D are equal. The class number of O4D is three times the class number of OK. This condition indicates that if the class number of Z adjoined root D is not divisible by three, then D admits odd solutions. To answer the natural question posed earlier of how many values of D satisfy the conditions of the theorem, we have the following result. Let us define the Eisenstein set as a set of all D congruent to five mod eight that admit odd solutions. Then it is conjectured that the Eisenstein set epsilon has natural density one third in the set of all D congruent to five mod eight. An upper bound of a half has been proved for the density of the set, but no such lower bound has been proved. The number of D in the Eisenstein set such that D is less than X, however, has been proved to be much greater than X to the power of a half. And with that, we've proved the equivalent conditions to Eisenstein's fourth problem, uh, specifically Eisenstein's Pell equation, admitting odd integer solutions. Um, future work could be done to find a lower bound for the Eisenstein set. And with more developments in quantum computing, uh, we could further verify the claim uh, in the conjecture uh, for the density of the Eisenstein set by using Holgren's algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Um, uh, I'd like to acknowledge Professor Florian Breuer of the University of Newcastle for his ongoing support with this project. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you guys later. Thank you.